Yo, what's going on? Serpa Squad Tanner here. I'm working on a lot of stuff right now and I gotta do a little bit of housekeeping, so why don't we go ahead and get right to it. One of the first things I wanna address here is the Nano Rack. Now, I've had this thing set up for a couple of years now and it definitely does a decent job, but it's pretty limited in what all I can put on it, so a lot of the projects I've showcased on it, they're actually not up and running anymore simply due to lack of space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a new one here, and in fact, I already cut out all the boards and stained them. We just gotta assemble it and poly it and do a few other things, but but I'm going to put these setups on it as well as all of my nano aquariums so that way we can consolidate the room and get rid of ancillary projects and make room for a lot of new stuff. So I'm going to get this thing assembled and I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. All right, here we are after a little bit of work. I got the stand all constructed leveled out and it's pretty much just ready for the tanks at this point now that's going to be a process in and of itself i gotta drain them put the fish in separate bins set up the tanks and then fill them back up get the fish going so i'm going to do that and then we'll do a little bit of an update on those tanks as i was going through this i wanted to take a moment to show you how large ellie got Anytime that I have fish people over, they always say she's massive. I'm just trying to get her in a spot where you can see her. I mean, easily two and a half inches long, but she's got some good girth to her too. <laughs> Almost looks like a koi, just like the way that her body's shaped and stuff. But I'll get her back in the tank and uh, we'll keep moving. And here we are, the final result. It looks really cool. There's a little bit of fine tuning I'm gonna have to do. If you see there's some cords and things back there, I'll hide all of that, of course, so you don't see it. And then I actually have to change all of the lighting. I'm just using what I had already, but I ordered some new ones, so we'll get all of that in here. And as you can see, like this setup, it doesn't actually even have light over it. Uh, that will all be situated once I get the new light. And then all these tanks or setups are actually long-term setups other than this one here with Petey, the goldfish. As I said, he was a little guy that came in on a plant from outside. We've been raising him up over in the winter and we got to put him in the pond out back. The only issue though is that it's been pretty cold. It's or off and on really. It's been warm, cold, warm, cold. So I'm waiting until it actually stays warm and then we can move him outside with his family. Now I'll do something completely new with this tank or make a completely new setup there. Let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, I have some ideas, but again, let me know. We also got to fill up this top shelf here. I have plans for one of the builds that's going up there, but if you have ideas for smaller builds you'd like to see up there, definitely let me know. But let's just take a step back and appreciate how cool this looks. We've got the two nano tanks over here, the 16 gallon Daniel scape, and then we got the Volcano Rasbora scape. And with all of these, I just think that's an awesome looking scene, just like a, a corner of tanks. I love the look. I don't know what you guys think, but there's something about seeing tanks lit up with plants in them and then all of the wood grain and that kind of thing. It just creates a really awesome look. Individually, the tanks are doing good. This is the creek tank. I did a quick update on that a few videos back, so I'm not really going to talk about it. We've got Petey, my dude. He's doing good, the tank's doing good, but again, it's not gonna be a long-term thing, so that will change soon. We've got Ellie's tank, the Beta, who I showed just a little bit ago, housed with X-ray tetras and Ember tetras, as well as a few Nerite snails and a Mono Shrimp. All in all, this tank's doing pretty well, too. I'm gonna have to get some more plants in there. I had some issues with algae, and I never really replenished the plants after that, so we'll get that addressed soon. We've got the living brick which was last week's video i honestly really love this project i think it's awesome probably one of my most creative things i've done on the channel yet and it was kind of the inspiration to do this rack i'm like you know what i've been coming up with a lot of cool stuff lately and i need some more room for them and i think it's just time to just to do things a little bit differently down here in the animal room and i'll talk more about that in a moment and then we have the river tank this one also is doing really well all the fish have really taken to the setup. They're pretty active in here and uh, they've grown and colored up quite nicely. I think it's been set up for several months at this point. 
Although there is a little bit of algae on the scape itself. I'm surprised it survived actually because this was the wood that was in the 150 cube way long ago. It had sat out for a while and then I actually boiled it and cleaned it off and everything. And that is the same algae that was living on it in that tank. So I don't know if it's just coincidence or what. So I just have to keep that in check. But I will say how the algae looks on these rocks and stuff. It gives a really cool aged feel to the tank. And uh, I just think it's a really cool piece to have. It has some cool life to it. And then of course over here we have the skyscraper paludarium. Unfortunately, I can't give you a really good look just because of the way the lights are, but I think you could tell just by the way those ferns look that it's doing really well. And then, I'm not sure, we're not going to be able to see them, but the daisies, rice fish that live in there, they're doing good as well. But all in all, these tanks are doing really well. And as I said with the other ones next to it, it just creates an awesome scene. And it's a really a better utilization of my space than what I was doing previously. Moving over to this side of the room, you can get a much better idea of all the space that I made. So all this down here and here. I still have Casper's tank right there, but being that it's a Fluval spec, it really doesn't match my other tanks. And I don't think I want to keep it in the collection long term. So what I'm going to do is once I move PD outside, I put Casper in PD's tank, and then we'll do a completely new tank for him on that rack, and then phase out the spec. And you'll notice that I have all of my terrariums up on the top. Now, obviously I like all of them, but I don't have a connection to most of them. So what I think I'm gonna do here shortly is actually take down most of these terrariums just to consolidate for more projects. So that way we can do new stuff and keep, keep the ball moving. But a lot of the older ones and stuff, I definitely wanna keep those because I'm more attached to them. And I think that what I wanna do is move all of them over to this shelf. So that way they're all in a single location or perhaps here. And the reason I say I'm not really too sure about that is because so I got my computer desk here. I want to put the computer desk under this window and then maybe I could have the terrariums on a shelf above it, something like that. I don't know. We'll see what I could rig up, but the desk is fine. And then all of this, I just want to have it in a single location. And then um, I won't really have the same sort of shelving arrangement underneath. I don't know for sure what I want to do, but it's something different, right? And then the 150 cube, if I move the computer desk here, then it can't really stay there. So I'm not sure. Although it could be a cool view if it was right to the side of it. You know, I could look into some tank. But with that, you know, I'm a big guy. I might not have room, room for my arms. So we'll see. And what that will do is it will free up this wall and allow me to do something, you know, something big on this wall. I don't know. We'll see. I don't really have, you know, nothing set in stone. And I'm always willing to change things. So... I don't know, that's kind of the idea, but I gotta get into these terrariums and we can take a quick look at them. The story with all of these terrariums is a little different. As I said, I don't have a particular attachment to really any of them. I'd say these three over here were just failed experiments. You know, they never thrived to start with. And then all the ones over here, they either didn't get the maintenance that they needed to truly thrive, or they're just overgrown or something along those lines. So we'll take a quick look and then we'll salvage all the materials we can and clean out the containers. And that's pretty much it for these ones. We might as well start off with the failed experiments. I've got the upside down stalactite terrarium, which in concept would definitely work, but in my case, I just didn't take the time to care for it properly. What I think you would need to do is just take this out every couple of days, spray it down, put it back in there, and it would work perfectly. In my case, I wasn't taking the time to do that, and unfortunately, the water that's down here in the system, it just didn't evaporate how you would expect and get the plants the moisture they needed, so it just never thrived. And you gotta remember, when I have all of these setups and things, with the sealed terrariums at least, if they don't thrive on their own accord, I'm not really intervening that much. I might open it up every couple of months or <laughs> every other year or something like that just to trim up the plants, give it a little bit of moisture. But if it's not doing its thing on its own, I'm likely not going to address it. We also have the no opening terrarium. Now this thing has been a rough go pretty much the whole time. This is actually the second rendition of it. And again, it just didn't do what you would expect it to do. All the plants sort of died off. And there also looks to be like some sort of bacterial bloom or something like that in here. But unfortunately, I actually also cracked the container here. So this one, we can't salvage at all. And <clears throat> Sorry about that, I got allergies right now. Anyway, with this one, I don't know for certain what happened, but it seemed like it had anaerobic conditions almost immediately after setup, and it just, it didn't thrive at all. So this one, I don't know exactly what happened, but it just didn't do its thing. 
As for these ones, they're in the state that you'll see them in due to lack of maintenance, care, that sort of thing, like I said. So we'll go through, we'll salvage whatever we can, clean out the containers so that way we can use them for something else in the future. All right, into the first one we go. You know I can't leave you hanging though. It smells good, it smells like a nice healthy terrarium, just what you'd expect. Anyway, what I'm gonna do here is just pull out all of the plants and moss. I'll put them in these bins here and just get them all separated so that way I can put them in my grow bins and use them for future builds. You never want to let a good piece of moss go to waste. Am I right? Am I right? You know, at these terrariums, the thing is that at the end of the day, I got to do creative things. It's just the way that I am. Even if I wasn't working on the channel here, I'd still be trying to push the boundaries of what's possible, what I'm able to do. And, you know, not all the builds are going to be successful. I'm not going to want to keep all of them. And, you know, if I could, I would gladly give all my builds away. I know that people will say, oh, you shouldn't have taken them apart. You should have given them away or whatever. But I can't really ship these things. I don't want people coming to my house. And there's only so many people in my area that are you know, interested in this sort of thing to where we could meet up or do something like that. But, you know, might as well just take the, take the things apart and repurpose the materials. Yo, are you kidding me? I was, hold on. I, I, you can't make this stuff up, people. All right, so I'm taking apart this bottle terrarium here. Let me... I, I gotta get this false bottom out of here. All right, got a grip on it. Oh. I don't know if it's gonna be in the false bottom still. All right, doesn't look like it. All right, I had to pull out a separate container here so that we can sift through the substrate and find it. If I can even get this all out of here. All right, I just put a little water in here so that we can get everything out like that. All right, it's gotta be somewhere in here. Ah, <laughs> man, I thought I was gonna have to waste so much time to find them. Check it out. If you remember, whenever we set up that terrarium, I, what was that, four years ago or whatever, when I was digging through the Fetonia, I found a little worm and I put him in there. Luckily, we got a little worm out of the deal. We'll set him aside for later. And I highly doubt this is the same worm, but how crazy is that? All this time later, I swear I, this is not staged. I didn't put this thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> he lives on. That is so crazy. I'm going to definitely have to put this into uh, one of the other terrariums. I've decided to put him in the creek tank. Go on, buddy. Your new home. How long can red worms live? Four to five years. According to Uncle Jim's worm farm, so their lifespan may go as long as four to five years. All right, man, I'm calling it. We're gonna say that's the same worm from whenever we set up that terrarium. I mean, I didn't see any others in there. I only put one in there. What's likelihood it could be another one? Probably high, but you know what I'm saying? How crazy would that be if that was actually the same worm? So anyway, let's get ourselves back to work. The interesting thing about the terrarium and a terrarium's terrarium here is that all of the ones on the inside actually did well, but the big one didn't. So I think what we'll do is we'll actually keep these terrariums. 
And then we'll just dispose of the larger one here. Something pretty cool about this one here. So the issue was the way that the lid is, it just allows a lot of water to come out. But if you look, we got clovers all in the back here. And I wonder, I wonder if there's a four leaf clover in here. Let me take a quick look. No, nah, no four leaf clovers, but that's pretty cool, right? I mean, I didn't plant any clovers in here, but they must have been in amongst the moss because I got that from outside. But uh, that's what happens. You plant it and different plants spring up. Um, maybe I'll put this in another terrarium or something. I don't know. It's pretty cool, though. All right, so that's how we're looking now. All empty over here. Everything's condensed on this side. So next time you see us, it's going to be completely different. And that's all I got for you in this one, Serpo Squad. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the improvements I made down here in the animal room and give me some suggestions on future projects you'd like to see. Got a lot of room down here now, so I got to get cracking. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I've got Pancake and Flapjack all over my t-shirt. This is a new design I just made. It's available on my Teespring store. Links for that are down in the description and such if you'd like to get that sort of thing. Also, next month, I'm going to be at Aquashella in Orlando. I'll leave the dates down here on the screen. If you're going to be there, let me know, and I'll see you there. Until next time, Surfer Squad, take care and peace.